Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Let's flash back an undisclosed number of years to when I was a baby. As babies do, I cried. A lot. Mostly as a way to communicate, but still. Nowadays, I mostly just cry when a dog dies in a movie, because come on, that's seriously the worst thing that could happen in a film. So innocent, so pure. But anyway, no matter the reason, you may have wondered why tears sometimes come spilling out from your eyeballs. And also, why are tears usually associated with sadness? Well, let's start off with the first surprising fact. You actually have three different types of tears, basal, reflex, and emotional. All three of these are activated by different stimuli, but are all formed in the same way. See, between your eyeball and eyelid sits the lacrimal gland, which both produces and drains your tears. But before one leaves your eye in a little drop, you blink and spread the tear across your eye, coating it in liquid. And that is actually the role of basal tears. These guys have the job of keeping your cornea, the transparent layer over your eyeball, from drying out. They are always present and cover cover your eye in water, oil, and mucus. On average, humans produce between 5 to 10 ounces of basal tears a day, which, fun fact, is roughly equivalent to a measuring cup. Next up are the reflex tears. These are the tears that show up when an irritant gets in your eye, like smoke and onions. I promise I'm not crying over the dog thing anymore, it's just the onions, so leave me alone. When this happens, your cornea sends the signal to the brain that it needs more lubrication, and then you cry. These tears are mostly just formed from water, and if there's too much for the eye's drainage system to handle, they spill out onto your cheeks, smudging any mascara all over the place. Not that I have that problem, but I feel like I look really good in makeup and I wouldn't want it ruined. And lastly, we have the most dreaded types of tears, the emotional ones. Whether you are really happy or really sad, as your limbic system and hypothalamus process the intense emotion, it activates the automatic nervous system, the one you can't control. This causes the heart rate to quicken, sweat to be released, and for you to cry. These tears contain the stress hormone ACTA as well as encephalin, a natural painkiller. This is why it sometimes feels good to have a good cry. Now it's unknown why this has become a part of the body's response to intense emotion, but it's thought that crying can be a way to appear more vulnerable or submissive to an attacker. But it's also a way to put your emotions on display which elicits the help and support of friends and family. But regardless of its evolutionary benefit, crying is a very normal part of life and can be quite the stress relief. After all, your tears are literally carrying away stress hormones. So next time you feel up for it, have a good cry, and I'll be right here waiting with a digital hug. Come here, come here, there you go. If you don't mind sharing, what's the last thing you cried about? And what else do you want to know about the human body? Let us know in the comments section below. Make sure you come back every Monday for a brand new video. As always, I'm Blocko, this has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.